Hi YouTube, AC Dodd here again, and this time we're going to look at vacuum units. While I'm out on the road tuning, uh, I come across many cars that uh, have missing or uh, failed vacuum units. Now, some of you might go, well, you know, what does it matter? Well, I think the first thing we need to understand is uh, a little bit about ignition timing so we can understand what we need to know and why we need to use vacuum units for road-based vehicles. So uh, engines require uh, a certain amount of ignition advance um, so that the appropriate uh, cylinder pressure can, or maximum cylinder pressure can be reached for any given um, throttle opening, any given engine speed. And that's usually taken care of in the distributor. Um, obviously modern cars have uh, ECUs, etc. And the way they do that is by uh, varying the ignition timing at certain RPM and obviously loads. Now, I've been doing it for many years, so none of what I'm telling you or what I'm saying in this video is anything new. This has been known about since nearly the dawn of engines, uh, you know, sort of the 1930s onwards, you know, so this is all old hat. Um, but the worrying thing is, is uh, certainly the cars I go and see, there is uh, little to next to nothing uh, in terms of the understanding of, of how these things work and why we need them. So the idea here is really to give you a bit of background so you can understand why these things and why I uh, like these things to be fitted on road cars. Uh, and I keep using that word there, road cars. Uh, and what I mean by a road car is any engine that's built to run on the road to do lots of mileages, especially cruising, motorway work, uh, light throttle running. Okay, so uh, I'm not including race cars, etc., in this uh, because they have a different requirement and they're not road vehicles. So moving on, um, we talked about cylinder pressure, okay? So what I mean by that is for any given speed, at any throttle opening, there is the optimum advance angle. What I'm not gonna talk about in this video is what those optimum advance angles are because they're different for different applications. But what I'm gonna talk about are the requirements uh, that you will need. So uh, talking about advance angle. The reason why there's an optimum advance angle is because um, it takes time, uh, as in an amount of physical time, for uh, the flame front to propagate from the spark plug uh, to burn all the mixture in the cylinder. Now that time varies uh, depending on how much is in the cylinder, how much compression there is, um, and the available window, okay? So the available window is the, is the time at which you've got for all this to happen. And that's really related to RPM. So the faster the engine's running, the less time you have for all this to happen, okay? So with these factors in mind and the way they operate, there is a need to change the ignition timing while the engine's running to maintain peak efficiency. So peak efficiency basically means you know, in layman's terms or as basic as I can make it, is for any given um, uh, load condition and speed, there is an optimum point um, to ignite the fuel air mix in the cylinder in order to generate the maximum pressure from that charge in that cylinder at that time, okay? And at that throttle opening. So, and that varies depending on those factors and the way the engine's operating, the fuel type, etc. So this is why it's a massive subject. So I'm trying to get this down as basically as I can. Um, so the problem comes is when we've got certain scenarios, uh, the distributor uh, without one of these can't provide the necessary advance required. So what I mean by that is for full power running, uh, the mechanical advance mechanism in the bottom of the distributor is able to advance the timing uh, such that, uh, that as the engine speed rises, uh, we need to advance the spark to happen earlier in the cycle so that there is the given time to burn that mixture. And for a full charge in the cylinder, um, for a given speed, there is a, an optimum angle. And that is taken care of by a well calibrated uh, mechanical advance mechanism. So you put your foot down and then the mechanism is, is uh, calibrated to give the appropriate advance as the engine revs rise under full load conditions. And that works perfectly. Clearly, that's okay for say, full power running, uh, maybe uh, competition applications when you're running flat out all the time. But on a road car, 
that's nothing like those conditions because 95, 98% of the time, you're just touching the throttle. So your cylinder's not filled, okay? You haven't got optimum fuel air mix in there. You've got uh, potentially quite a weak mixture and you're not filling the cylinder fully. So under those conditions, um, what actually happens with combustion is uh, the speed of that burn, once you ignite, uh, the mixture is much slower because there is much less uh, uh, amount of air fuel in the cylinder and it's not being confined as much as it would be if it was a full charge and then compressed. Okay, so uh, confinement of uh, a fuel air mix in an engine basically speeds up the combustion. Uh, and it's that issue when you speed it up too much and you can run yourself into detonation. So you know, this is this is the finer points of what we're talking about. So what we're trying to get to here is the requirement to ignite the fuel air mix changes based on the load, okay? So basically what happens is on light running when you haven't got a cylinder filled and you're not got the maximum confinement, um, your burn time slows down and your cylinder pressure drops. So in order to counteract that, you advance the ignition timing under those conditions to start the burn earlier and therefore, that slower burn means you can uh, uh, have a cylinder pressure rise, uh, which gives you more cylinder pressure um, based on the actual piston position being in the optimum place once the burn uh, has, has got through the mixture to, to give you the, the maximum pressure you can get before the piston comes down. All right, so that's effectively, you know, in, in big handfuls, how it works. Um, the vacuum unit, is therefore used uh, to take vacuum from the engine, which then pulls a lever and advances the timing. So when you're on light loads and, then, and there's high engine vacuum and you're not filling the cylinders, the vacuum unit advances the timing and then uh, gives you that uh, appropriate ignition advance angle to get the most out of the fuel and air mix that's put in the cylinder under light load conditions. That is the benefit of using this unit, okay? And people are still taking these off or buying distributors that haven't got these on for road cars. And then they're calling me out and they're wondering why their fuel consumption's heavy. Um, and uh, the engine maybe doesn't feel as sharp uh, as it used to, or maybe doesn't feel as nice as it used to. Because the other benefit of running one of these is at part throttle is the engine feels nice and responsive it's quick on the throttle you don't have to push it down and it feels maybe a little bit flatter or a bit dull so the important thing to understand in one of these is it not only improves your fuel economy and your you know drivability improves throttle response etc so this 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 sharpens the engine up and makes it uh uh you know much more uh, pleasant to drive the other thing that this will do is it changes um, the uh, smoothness of the engine. So if you're running an engine at cruise speeds and you're running without vacuum advance, you will notice the engine feels a bit dull um, and maybe like it's it's kind of working slightly harder. If you advance the timing, you'll find that that engine will smooth out and it will become uh, more powerful, uh, more powerful for the same throttle position. And that's because the efficiency is rising. So. You know there are a number of reasons for that the other thing is and as a clue in the thumbnail with the blowtorch okay now when you're driving under cruising conditions um, you have got a situation happening um, where there is light load light a uh, uh, small uh, cylinder filling happening very light um, uh, throttle openings and the burn takes longer so if you haven't got a, a vacuum unit in there and advancing the timing, that burn can take so long that it's still happening, okay, when the exhaust valve happens. And you get what I call the blowtorch effect. Okay, so what's the blowtorch effect? Well, here's a valve, okay? So this is an exhaust valve from cylinder head from an A-series 1275 engine. It's a blowtorch. Now, when you're running down the road and you've got light throttle openings, okay, and you've got an engine uh, which is fitted with a vacuum unit, this is what's happening, okay? So you have a small little amount of uh, burnt gases running around the valve, okay? Nice and simple. But the most important thing to understand about this little demonstration is 
the engine's designed for that. That's why you've got very um, uh, high spec materials in the valves and the valves themselves can put up with that heat. And not only that, the heat from the valve is able to be dissipated into the head when it sits into the seat, okay? And that's absolutely how the engine needs to operate. Now, the problem comes is when you change and you're starting to do cruise work and you don't have a vacuum unit because what happens then is the ignition timing isn't optimum for those conditions and you end up with a lot more uh, uh, burning gases going past the exhaust valve. Allow me to demonstrate. That condition can only be standard for a certain amount of time before you end up burning the valve prematurely, burning the seat, and we all know that A-series cylinder heads, especially the 1275, with big valves, like to crack. So if you reduce the chance of cracking your cylinder heads and overheating and burning your valves by fitting a vacuum unit. And what that means is we reduce that flame or that heat to a manageable level and your components last longer. And not only that, you use less fuel and the engine runs better. Okay, clearly might be an extreme uh, little demonstration there, but my point as I'm trying, to, I'm trying to explain to you is your engine is better off with the appropriate ignition timing under road driving conditions. Now, if you're racing, uh, there is very little time spent uh, at part throttle because most of the time you're on full power, okay? So those situations where you end up burning valves and all that sort of stuff, don't arise but on the road uh, they do arise because you spend most of the time at part throttle cruising down mo motorways a roads or just um you know pootling into town and all those sort of things so it's something to bear in mind now the other thing to understand is uh there are a number of different types or different um uh, manufacturers of these vacuum units and what that basically means is they're all slightly different so in order to get the best vacuum unit for your application you need to work out uh what the advance angle needs to be for your particular car uh the way you drive and the throttle angle that you're you're, you're using uh, and the really the only way to do that is because uh, it's quite time consuming is to do it on the road. So uh, there is a video that I'll put in the description uh, by Unity Motorsports Garage in conjunction with David Vizard. Yes, it is based on um, uh, V8 engines uh, in, in America, but the principles are the same. Um, you know, you basically use yourself uh, a hand vacuum unit and uh, you drive the car and um, you use an engine vacuum gauge while you're using the, uh, uh, the vacuum pump and then you um, set up the vacuum such that you are uh, optimizing the ignition advance to achieve the highest vacuum for a given speed. Simple as that, all right? It takes a long time to do it, which is why uh, it's often overlooked. Uh, certainly people who charge to do it, you know, won't be offering that service because it will be cost many, many hundreds of pounds to do that, all right? Uh, certainly when I come out on the road and do it, um, I haven't got time to do that or people haven't got the money to afford that at the hourly rates that we have nowadays. So the most important thing is, is you have a vacuum unit and it is connected and it is used uh, because on a road car, you'll be better off. Now, moving on, there are some scenarios where you put uh, that on a perhaps a more, a more highly tuned road engine and it will lose uh, a little bit of power, uh, especially on a dyno as you accelerate up through full power. And that's due to the transition and the speed that this can retard when you put your foot down. So in those scenarios, what I suggest to people is um, actually uh, because of the little time you spend at full power, you're still better off with a vacuum unit. Um, or maybe you need to use something called a spark delay valve, which just uh, slows down the rate of uh, vacuum change um, and the speed it comes on at. Um, Spark delay valves are available. I haven't got a particular link, but uh, you, you can get them in different uh, um, uh, ratings. I would suggest usually something like a two second one is all you need. Uh, Ford vehicles uh, uh, a good few years ago were uh, in production with spark delay valves for, for similar reasons. But the most important thing to understand is 
a vacuum unit is very much needed uh, to optimise for road car applications. Anyway, I hope this video is useful um, and you get something out of that. Uh, you'll always see me um, recommending a vacuum unit to be used on a road car distributor, especially when I come out for tuning, because uh, it makes the engine last longer, it makes the engine nicer to run, uh, and it also um, you know, gives you more fuel economy. Typically, uh, depending on the application, maybe six to eight to the gallon, which uh, nowadays in the UK, when it's you know, a good six pound, six pound for a gallon of fuel, um, using one of these uh, will pay for itself. Anyway, uh, as ever, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.